G'day and welcome to Australia. This is Adam from ABA Magnetic Levitation Australia doing another mad micro RC mods video. Sorry there's been a gap in production. If you're a YouTuber, you don't really get a day off um, unless you're sick or you don't have any budget to work with. And I had a bit of both, so there was a bit of a, a gap. So I thought let's get back to the uh, beginning a little bit and go with the cheapest RC car I can find. This one here. It's a Kmart product. Kmart sucks. Say it while you can, while they're still in business. But um, yeah, for five bucks, oh, I must admit, I mean really, if the thing turns on and works, I mean that's a bonus already for five dollars. Um, I was expecting to buy five dollars worth of parts, but um, yeah, believe it or not, this thing was actually not too bad. They were advertised at 15, when I went to get one they were five. So I grabbed two and thought we'll hack one up and use it as a platform to show what you can do to a basic RC toy just to make it a lot more fun to drive. Um, in this video you will see a lithium power mod, easy. Um, there's also a um, antenna mod or a reception mod where it pretty much doubled the range of the car which is great and all I had to really do was just drill a hole in the body. And um, yeah, I also do a ridiculous power mod to it at the end just for a bit of fun and make the car completely uncontrollable. Stick around. Um, this video is basically how I started out doing stuff like this. And if you're interested or curious about doing this to any sort of RC toy or anything like that, this is probably a good place to start. So, please enjoy. Oh yes, and also have a look on Patreon. Um, you can go there, look, donate a couple of bucks, sign on for a, a monthly fee of $2 to have full access to all the videos on there. Um, I did do the Hot Wheels full build um, RC car on there. so. Anyone who's interested in owning or building a car like that, that's the video to watch. Full detailed, shows everything I had to do. Anyway, let's get on with it and um, I'll see you at the end. Okay, this is me testing the stock standard car with three AAA batteries. First thing I noticed is uh, reception issues. It's uh, only a, a 27 megahertz or 40 megahertz system on these cars. Um, Power wise, this floor is not exactly terribly clean so it's a little bit slippery but the car still doesn't really have that much extra power to do anything. Tested on a grippier surface just quickly, not really much difference. Um, this is mainly just to get an idea of top speed. So yeah, this is sort of the uh, baseline I suppose you'd call it. Now the first thing I generally do with these sorts of toys or cars or anything I get like this RC, it's got batteries in it, they're very heavy, I take them out and I test it with an S1 LiPo. There's a plug which I've just basically hooked into the negative and positive inputs. It's a 120 milliamp hour nanotech S1 LiPo battery and just plug the two together. Just plug the two together. And it's a ample replacement. Generally you find much more accessible amperage and a lot lighter. So you instantly see a change, if one is possible. Okay, this is a retest with the car on S1 the LiPo, and it definitely has a slightly higher RPM, um, or maybe just a little bit more power to get up to a higher RPM quicker, more torque at the back wheels, so it slips out a little bit more. But, you know, it needs a bit more than that to <laughs> sort of be heaps more fun. Um, I put it on a grippy surface, I lost access to the blue floor so I just chucked it down. This floor that's had the carpet ripped up, it's a little bit rough and bumpy and uh, reception issue is still a problem. But yeah the car is definitely a little bit faster, not much top end more, um, but definitely got up to speed a great deal quicker. Now people ask me a lot why is um, the three AAA or AA batteries, which is 4.5 volts, um, not as good as an S1 LiPo. Well, there's one reason, is the weight, and the other one is accessible amperage. Because, I mean, look at the weight of that. Less than 8 grams. They put these ones in. Holy moly, 34 plus. Okay, reception. Car's biggest problem probably is the reception. The actual front end's not too bad. The gearbox is tough enough. Um, the motor in it's an odd size motor, which is a bit of a pain if you want to try and put more power in it. Um, but the reception is probably the biggest problem. 
uh, its range. Now, a lot of these cars, you can do little mods and things to fix the reception without really trying too hard. Now, I'm going to try something on this one. I know what's inside. Now, a lot of them, cheap RC cars, they do this sort of thing. So your aerial's tucked in and looped up, and then they've got this foil, conductive foil on the back of the car. Now, this one, it looks like they took some material off the end and they connected it up, which is really, really good, because a lot of the times they don't. <laughs> so the idea is that it conducts onto the foil and this becomes your aerial, basically. But from what I understand and what I've done in the past, these aerials in this hurt system work best if they're up in the air, nice and proud. So what we're going to do is we're just going to roughly work out where the aerial comes out. And I'm going to make a hole. Somewhere around there, maybe. Good spot. You sort of want it to come out in line with where the aerial is. It's just a lot easier that way. So I think what we'll do is we'll just put a hole here because it's easy. So a little flat surface area there. So we'll just mark a spot there. Oh, how much meat we got. Hopefully it's not coming through where there's anything. Looks like we're safe. So what I'll do is I'll just try and punch a hole through here. Just using my new blade, my hobby knife. You can see it sharp, it cuts a little spiral like a drill when you go down. Um, just quicker and easier this way. And all we need to do is just put a hole through. Now, what I'm going to put in the hole is um, some plastic tube if I've got it. If not, some heat shrink. Normally, I wouldn't use heat shrink. Um, I'd use some stiff plastic tube. But uh, for the sort of what the car's worth and such, I think some heat shrink will be fine. There we go. I might use the thinner stuff. So, and then all we have to do is I'll shrink it a little bit at the end there, just to make it a little easier to insert it. All I've really done is just made that end close up a little bit. That's it. And um, I'll make our hole big enough to get that heat shrink through. And hopefully we should have better reception after doing this. The other way to improve the reception is to <coughs> is to um, boost your broadcast signal. Um, I don't want to try that with this one yet. Um, this is just for a bit of fun. So what you can do though is you can you know instead of running the batteries that does run to triple A's, you can boost that up and put um, the lithium and S1 lithium in there instead. There we go. Nice thing, if you use stiff plastic tube, you can glue it in place and have it sort of just sit there nicely. This is a heat shrink, it's not really meant for this, but that's what we're going to try it for. So, let's put the screws back in and um, I'll give it another try and see if the reception's improved. Because, yeah, it, if you saw when I was testing it, I had to reach over a lot and it stopped. Reception was crap. So, let's see. I decided to um, do the motor mod before I test the reception. So basically the lid's back off the car. And this is the two bolts and the rear gearbox and motor cover I'm just removing now. Ah, small motor. That's so the compound gear um, and a small DC brushed motor. motor. Now power. Um, the motor that comes in the car is this size. This is like a, called a 130 DC brushless motor. This is a smaller size. I don't know what it is. Um, I haven't looked into it. I don't really care because I don't generally use these size motors anyway. But it has a 1.5 millimeter shaft, which is a little trickier to work with. And yeah, I don't have any motor options for this one, but I've got an idea. In the past, 
I've got my 130 motor in the Lancer for instance when I was testing that and I got a cordless brush motor that's about 50,000 RPM. This motor originally did about I think 18,000 RPM. What I did is I stripped out the magnets and I put in these spaces so I could actually insert an 8.5 motor in there. This one doesn't fit because it's got glue on it but basically it goes right up inside it like that. You pull the leads out through the slot there and you can put the um, brush cover back on so it looks like it's a standard motor still. And it's very, very effective. Um, these older style motors are great, but they're not very efficient. Uh, they use a lot of um, amps on startup when the car is stationary and you're taking off. Um, by getting one of these and putting one of these in, sometimes you don't need to, but if you gear it down a little bit when you put it in as well, the results are astounding. You'll have much better takeoff, longer running time, and higher top end. So I thought, well, why don't we try and do something like that with this one? So I'm going to pull this one apart and try and install this motor inside this housing. All these motors are pretty much the same, they're just different size. Little tabs on the side there, I'm going to remove them. Um, I'll also cut away the um, electrical stuff on there because there'll be no need for any of that. And I probably won't even use the end housing afterwards. So I'll just chuck, sorry, I'll just cut this off. I think this is a diode. And um, yeah, we should be able to pop the casing apart. There's your tiny little brush gear in there. One for either side of the commutator. Ace of negative and positive. And then we've got our rotor inside there. And inside the housing or the casing, this is what we're after, there's magnets. And we'll probably have to remove them, which is not normally too hard. Okay, I've had another look at this. Um, like most of them, it's got a little retaining clip in there. I just see a little springy clip. Just pull that out first if you can. Okay. Wear safety glasses when you're doing stuff like that. Now the magnets should be loose now. There we go. Should I just swap them out? Magnets out. Little U-shaped magnets, not very powerful, they're um, only a ferrite material. Now we'll just test fit it now. Yeah, see, we can get that going a lot deeper. About half a millimetre more if we get rid of that bush that's in there, so we'll probably do that. Um, because this is like a cheap how you going project, my idea is to literally just jam stuff down either side. Tubes of tubes of carbon, uh, matchsticks, anything, and just glue it in place. That should be enough. So, um, for the back housing, I don't know. I'll wait until we get that bush out. So we get that out now. This might be a bit tighter than the tweezers. Which way is it going in? Oh, yeah, I've got to tap it back in through, I think. Like that. Yeah, I think I'll tap it in from the top. And that's a little bush that's um or bearing but in the old days bushes were made out of a sintered brass bronze material and that's pretty much what that is and yeah when the motor's working this is basically running on that side of the um shaft there and the other part of it is actually the plastic that's your other bearing or bush in there that's your plastic which is goes up in this end with the brushes voila so that's all we need about that and yeah now we should be able to put that in a little more it seats a little bit better yep wonderful okay the thing i found um, that seemed to fit best with the size requirements i had were these um, cotton bud things also because they're a hollow tube of plastic um, you can basically jam them in just a little bit and they'll deform all about the same and equally take up the same sort of space. So originally I put four in there and thought that it might be able to space the motor out that way. But in the end, I did fill in the spaces around the side with an extra four. Okay, 
for the next part, um, I've got to glue the tubes in place. Um, I also forgot to mention that I filed probably about half a millimetre off the front of the motor where the shaft comes out, just to give me a little bit more shaft to put the pinion on. I've used a CA glue. This is a non-foam safe one. It's um, medium. There is a runnier one, but this one's perfect for the applications I use it for. So you can basically just drip it in where you need it. And uh, when you think everything's in place and there's enough glue in there, then you get out the kicker, which activates the glue within seconds. Just start working really fast, dumping that stuff in there. Tend not to spray it, even though you can. It's um, tends to waste a lot of it and put it everywhere. And that's pretty much it. Just let it sit for a couple of minutes. Okay, this is the short version of me putting the motor back together. They're pretty simple. It's normally red to red, black to black, or red to white and black to black. The um, motor didn't need the rear end housing on and it pretty much just fits straight in the space as it should. Um, it has a little plastic pusher that goes up on the back as well. It actually pushed up against the um, coreless brushed motor and um, everything else pretty much just went straight back in place. The mesh was good enough, <laughs> not as great as I would normally have it, but uh, yeah, that was a quick test. Hot tire expanding. Okay, this is the car being tested after the motor mod. Um, it definitely had a great deal more power. The floor surface is like a timber polished fake floorboard thing. Uh, if they're clean and the tyres are scuffed, a bit rubbery, it sort of grips a bit, but you're up against it. Um, the tyres can literally turn on the rims. So the other problem is the left wheel sticks out more to the right, so the car tends to want to kick off to the right all the time when you're taking off or hitting the throttle. Keeping in mind that it's a non-proportional throttle. You push that button and it's all the power at once. Making the car a little tricky to drive. But yeah. For uh, five bucks and a bit of fun, wonderful. I mean, if you put some decent wheels and tyres on this thing and put a servo in it with proportional acceleration, it would probably be a really tough unit that would be a lot of fun just to bash around the house. And it would be extremely fast. Um, it struggles to get traction. So... I pretty much just uh, got the car on the floor out there and just decided let's just push it around for a bit of fun and see how long it lasts. Um, it took about two or three battery charges and um, yeah, the car pretty much held up right until the very end. And um, you'll see that at the end of this driving footage. <laughs> Okay, so I thought um, I'll add some weight to the back of the car and inside the car, which I did, which is not normally a good idea with the 0.4 mod gear set that this car has in it, um, especially because I've used a motor that has a 1mm shaft diameter, um, which means the pinion on the shaft is under a massive amount of loading when you start adding weight. I added four ball bearings and a little plate of brass to the back of the car just to see if I could get a little bit more traction. And it sort of did work a bit, but, um, you know, realistically, the wheels and tyres on this thing are absolutely atrocious. And, um, yeah, that's probably the main reason why I had a bit of trouble steering in that. And also the slam steering, which I mentioned before. If you don't put a resistor in there and dull down that effect, um, the extra amperage that motor gets, and keep in mind the slam steering motor was actually bigger than the drive motor in this car. Um, it puts too much force on the steering front end and everything and that and eventually starts to sort of jam up when it's in its end positions which is what was starting to happen with this car in the end but it didn't stop the fun I just kept driving it around um, but yeah that was probably the only thing I could have done to it that would have been any better or fitted a tight opinion but I didn't have one at the time and I didn't like I said this is just a quick for a bit of fun um, hopefully some people might uh, have a toy or something that wanted to do stuff like this too and it gives them a little bit of help or you can fix a reception problem on one you currently have that you might enjoy. By the way, um, I hope you enjoyed the footage and um, yeah, don't use reverse too much um, <laughs> when you weigh down your car. Opinions start to be a bit weird and then that happened. So, 
Never mind. See you next time.